For parts A, B, and C, we are asked to calculate the average velocity of a swimmer as she swims the length of a pool. And we know that the equation for average velocity is given as follows. We have the average velocity, symbolized by v-bar, is equal to the final position minus the initial position, and then divided by the time interval during which the motion takes place. In part A, we are calculating the average velocity for the first half of the swim. Now, the swimmer is going to begin at this location of the pool. We've basically superimposed a y and x axis on top of the pool, and it's useful to do this because then this would show us that her initial x position would just be zero. And then she swims across the pool, and her final x position would be what we have marked L. L simply represents, of course, the length of the pool. So with those values in mind, we can calculate the average velocity in part A. We take the final position of L, subtract the initial position of zero, and then divide this by the time interval during which this motion has taken place. The question indicates that this time interval is symbolized by T1. So if we simplify the numerator, of course, we will just have L over T1, and this would be the correct answer to part A. In part B, she's going to turn around and swim back to where she started. So our position labels are going to change here. We're going to call her initial position L, and her final position is now zero. With those changes, we can calculate the average velocity for that portion of her trip. The final position is zero minus the initial position of L, and then divided by the time interval during which this motion takes place. That was stated in the question as T2. And so if we simplify the numerator, this time we'll have negative L over T2. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Moving up to part C, we are asked for the average velocity of the round trip. So let's change our labels very carefully here. The swimmer, let's see if we can get her out of here. Well, we kind of ruined the pool by doing that. But the swimmer is now going to begin at the origin still. So her initial position would be xi is equal to zero. She swims down to L, turns around and comes back and stops here. So her final position in this case will also be zero. So when we calculate this average velocity, we'll take a final position of zero, subtract the initial position of zero, and then divide by the entire time interval. So it was t1 to get down to the one end of the pool and then t2 to get back to the original location. Of course, the numerator here simplifies to zero and then zero divided by any time interval would simply be zero. So this would be the correct answer to part C. And now finally on to part D of the question, which asks us for her average speed for the round trip. Now average speed has a different formula, so let's take a look at that. We can see that the average speed would be the path length divided by the elapsed time. Now her path length, we have to be careful here. Remember, she starts at a position of zero, travels all the way to the one end of the pool, so she's traveled a distance of L, and then she turns around and goes back to her starting point, but notice that that distance is also L. So she's traveling L to get to the one end, and then another L to get to the other end. In total, we would have to add those two Ls. That would give us the entire path length. And then we would divide this by the elapsed time, which would be T1 plus T2. So this would give us her average speed. If we simplify the numerator, we'll simply have two L divided by T1 plus T2, and this would be the correct answer to part D.